This is Talk of the Town, a weekly program featuring community events happening in and around Northeast Michigan with your host, Nancy Smitham, and get the latest from Alpena Community College with Don McMaster. And now, today's Talk of the Town. Good morning and welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Nancy Smitham. My first two guests today are both from the Salvation Army here in Alpena. I have Amy and Kevin Cedarval. Good morning and welcome. Good morning, Hi, Nancy. Nancy. You know, I'm really kind of sad to have both of you here. I'm very happy because you're friends and I really like both of you, but that means that when I see those uniforms and see this, like everyone else, you're here year round, but this is the time of year when you're so visible in our communities. Yes, we've definitely picked up the amount of work we're doing and uh, the things that are seen by people or happen kind of the uh, last couple of months of the year. <laughs> That's true. So what do you, how do you think the season is going to shape up this year, Amy? I think it's going to be good. Um, it's going to be busy. It's going to be, I think that from what we've seen, we're going to see a lot of people. We're going to be able to help a lot of people. Um, our kettles start November 11th. Um, so you'll start seeing those, those red kettles and hearing the bells around town. Um, we're excited about that. We're, we're really looking forward to uh, seeing the income from that because we're hitting that slump where we're kind of toward the end of our... Uh, our funds and uh, you know we need that that influx to help us get through the next the next fis or not even fiscal year but calendar year <laughs> so. and you know Kevin you have so many programs and so many things that go on year round and things that pe that you do in our community that people aren't even aware of that's why we need to keep those funds coming in year round but give me an idea of some of the wonderful things that you do well during Christmas we do a lot of our, our, our public programming like uh, we have our Christmas toys and Christmas baskets uh, that's kind of coming up real quickly for registration on that. Uh, throughout the, the whole year, we do have just a, a huge amount of programs going on. Uh, we are one of the main uh, agencies that do utilities assistance, and uh, that's a huge program every yes. year. Uh, we, we usually spend between $150,000 to $250,000 to help people in Alpena County with, with utility bills. Um, one of our favorite programs is, is our summer at risk program. Uh, it, it's a great program for kids that, that have issues at school or, or at home and they need a place that they can kind of keep the learning going through the summer. Uh, and it's, it's just a great program. We, were, we had the great time this year of, of being really involved in the program and uh, just had a lot of fun with field get trips. Good and food. Yes, we yes. have a we have a yes. chef from uh, one of the local schools that comes in, and she makes makes sure everything is is up to par. And, and they all love Jen. They just uh, they love the food. <laughs> and we have yeah the summer feeding program um, is what we do. It's the, called Meet Up and Eat Up. It's through the government, and that's open to any children, uh, eighteen. Well, yeah, eighteen and under, and. You know, if adults come, we feed them too. But, <laughs> but um, it's an opportunity to try to get people fed, the kids fed throughout the summer who are used to being able to eat free lunch and breakfast at school. Um, that's one of the things that people don't really think about. Right. When you have a family that's low income and they get free breakfast and lunch at school in the summer, that's another added um, effect to have to pay for those meals that they're not used to have to pay for. So we offer breakfast and lunch for that for any children who come in. Um, and they can come in and eat alongside of our, our summer rec children. But um, yeah, the summer rec program is, is probably one of our favorites. And one of the other things that we've been able to implement here is, is our food pantry changes, yes. uh, which has been uh, accepted really well. Um, it, it, the way it works now, you come in and you, you uh, apply for assistance. Uh, they, have, they, of course, have to do some paperwork. Sure. Uh, but then we partner up with, we call them shopping buddies. And uh, they actually take you into our food pantry and you get to select the stuff that, that your family likes. And uh, it, it used to be that you would get a, a basket or a bag stuff. full yeah, of stuff. If you didn't use it. it, it and that was kind of our thinking. It doesn't help yeah. us if we give you four cans of green beans if nobody in the house likes green beans. Uh, it's, so it's, it's, it's also been great. an issue of wanting people to have a little bit more dignity. Yes. You know, maybe you can't go to Meyer or Purchase or, um, you know, Neiman's to shop for your food, but at least you can have that self-dignity to be able to go and pick the things that are going to be best for your family rather than somebody just handing you a box of food that they've decided is what you need. Um, so it's something that we, we really enjoy doing it that way just to kind of help. And the same thing um, with Christmas, we're kind of turning that around with instead of just handing families a trash bag of toys, 
um, we're wanting them to actually be able to have the opportunity to come in and shop Great. in a toy town where they can come in and, and actually choose for their children things that they can give them. And so. you know, a lot of times people feel that there's not something that they can do to help. But I just, we really want to stress to everyone that if you come and ring the bell for free, if you belong to a church or youth group, get them to come and yeah. ring the bell for free. Get them to come and help pack um, commodities. Get them to come and help get the Christmas mm -hmm. store ready. Um, yeah. You know, one dollar, um, if everybody in Alpena gave one dollar, every person, I mean, you'd be at your goal and over in a very short <laughs> amount of time. <laughs> And, you know, they can drop things off, drop off donations. Yeah. They can go to the um, thrift store, you know, donate items to the thrift store. Because that's a wonderful entity in our community, something that has great merchandise, pretty accessible, you know, mm -hmm. getting better all the time over yeah. there. You know, and the prices are wonderful. So you could go get clothing for your family. Mm -hmm. And if there's a struggle and they have a hard time getting things, you know, they can always contact you for some more yeah. assistance. Right. Yeah, all all of the money that is raised through the Salvation Army stays in this community. And uh, when, when someone does need things from our, our thrift store, we have a voucher program where they can go over and get assistance through that too. Uh, so it's, it, it just helps us both ways with, with adding income into the, to the local entity, but also to give us that opportunity for service. Right, and if you think one dollar, one can of green beans, mm -hmm. you know, one sweater, one pair of pants donated, that it doesn't make a difference, it really, really does. It does. It, does. it makes a huge difference. There's no way we could do even a quarter of what we do if it wasn't for the people who volunteered and the people who donated goods and, and money and, you know, all that type of thing because there's just, there's no way our budget could stretch as far to do what we can if it, we didn't have the donations. So how do families sign up to get the assistance for the holiday season? Well, uh, November 1st through the 4th okay. is our main sign up. Uh, and it's, it's actually a Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. It's from 10 to 3. And then Thursday, it's three to six. Okay. So that we can make sure if you know you work during the day, you can come a little bit later. Um, and that's our main sign up. There's going to be flyers out. And, and what uh, kind of paperwork do they have to bring with them? They need to bring um, picture ID for the person signing up. Okay. Um, they need to have some form of identification for anybody in the household. We're pretty okay. lenient on those. And then for the children that they're signing up for toys um, assistance and that, we need to have a birth certificate or papers showing the custodial. Um, guardianship okay. of it just because of the child just because that kind of keeps everything sure and now do they come to the center on 2nd Avenue to do this yes. okay. yep uh, we'll be open uh, bright and early hopefully and uh, <laughs> just it's a great time for us because we love to meet people and uh, it's one of those opportunities of just uh, to talk to people and mm -hmm. see if there's anything we can do to help them through the Christmas season. And I do really have to say that you do, I've been there, watched it, you do treat people, your staff is wonderful, you do treat people with dignity and you s certainly give new meaning to there by the grace of God go I. Well that, that's our goal, is, is in everything we do we want to help people uh, to overcome poverty and, and you know we, we deal with generational poverty yes. a lot and that's what we want to do is, is to help people out of that cycle um, so that they can you know, see that there's a way out and maybe help out their children so they don't have to face the same problems that they're facing. Okay, a number for someone to call. 358 Excuse me. Sorry. 358-2769. <laughs> yes. Thank you both very much. Thank you. Nancy. Thank you. I'll be right back following these messages. <clears throat> Hi, welcome back. My last guest today is Stephanie Gandula from Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary. Good morning, Stephanie. Good morning, Nancy. How are you? I know you have a lot of wonderful events coming up, some first-time events, some yes. fun stuff, so get us started. All sorts of stuff coming up. Um, you, you think, well, the field season's winding down, so it must be slow at the Marine Sanctuary. That's not the case. <laughs> we have all sorts of field trips still coming through. We have some classes coming and working on their underwater robots. And then, of course, we have the events like you mentioned. So coming up on October 28th and 29th, it's going to be a very busy weekend. We'll be partnering with the, as, as we've done every year now for, for some time, um, partner with the Downtown Development Association and the Michigan State Police. They put on their trunk or treat. Right. And so we do the trick or treat through the haunted ship, and we'll be doing that again Friday, October 28th from 5 to 8 p.m. Of course, that's free, open to the public. It's it's such a fun evening to go, go downtown and then come just a few blocks uh, over and come to the Marine Sanctuary. And we have just been decorating every year. We ramp it up another notch. And 
the de decorations are really, really impressive. We've got about 50 volunteers. Oh my goodness. That are bringing the decorations that they've used in the past at their homes and really just, you know, getting involved and making this a spooky, spooky place. But it still is for all ages on Friday, October 28th. Okay. And then, rather than take down all those fun decorations, we thought this year we would start a new event for 21 and over okay. on Saturday, October 29th. Now, this is a ticketed event. Uh, it's $20 to get in, and it's from 6 until 9 on Saturday, October 29th. Okay. And you'll get a commemorative glass, so either a stemless wine glass or a uh, pint glass, a beer pint glass, okay. with your $20 ticket entry. Mm -hmm. And I just saw them today. They just came in, and they have the Sanctuary logo oh, on them. Yay. They're really cool. I'll be getting one myself for sure. And then there'll be hors d'oeuvres available. There'll be some... Um, uh, the beer and wine, of course, so Austin Brothers and local wineries and, and Michigan-style beer and wine. And then there'll also be dancing and Ooh. a costume contest. And so it'll be a, a, you know, a fun event for the adults. Okay, from 6 to 9 on the 29th. Uh, yeah, exactly. And then back up to Friday again. Okay. Um, after you go trick-or-treating, if you like, you can come to a free concert at the Alpena High School. Now, this is starting at 7 o'clock, and this is a really unique fun free experience for the family it's called paddle song of the lakes paddle to the sea so you know song of the lakes from yes. maritime festival they come almost every year and just put on an amazing show um, they're known for their you know, great lake style and um, you know a maritime style of singing folk music just really a lot of energy and activity so they have partnered with the friends of the sanctuary and they wrote a grant to through the michigan humanities council to produce this show that is all about a children's book called Paddle to the Sea. Ooh. So Paddle to the Sea is has been around a long time. I think it was published in the 1949. It won a Caldecott medal. Uh, you know, I think the best medal you can get as a children's book. And Paddle to the Sea follows a, a little boy who carves a wooden canoe. And then he carves a little wooden paddle man and he puts it in the water and in Lake Superior. And then the book follows the, the paddle man and his little canoe all the way through the water, Great Lakes water system to the Atlantic Ocean. Wow. And along the way, people that the paddle man comes across, pull them out of the water and they look at the boat and they're, they're like, what is this? And then carved on it, it says, put me back in the water, I am paddle to the sea. And so the book is just a really, you know, an example or a great way to look at all the the history and the culture and the ecology and the environmental um, aspects of the Great Lakes. So that's what it is, an exploration of the Great Lakes just set in a little canoe story. And that's free also? That's free. So that's, um, that's a free event on Friday night starting at 7 o'clock okay. at the Alpena High School. And it's going to be a whole bunch of song and interaction with the audience. And I think it's going to be really, really entertaining. And that's in definitely um, through uh, a grant through the Michigan Humanities Council. So we're very, very thank glad. You, thank to, you, thank you. Yes, yes. Okay. And it's, what's, another really cool thing about that is during the day on Friday, okay. many classrooms in the area, um, Alpena area schools, are getting bussed through this grant to the the school to the Alpena High School to see the performance. Oh, wonderful! So they're doing daytime performances as well, and then opening up to the um, the public and families in the evening. You know, that's a wonderful thing about our community—the collaborative events that go on. I mean, between you and the library oh, and the sure. museum and the Thunder Bay Arts Council, you know, the Blues Festival, all the wonderful things that all of you do and share. Mm -hmm. You bring them to town, but you share them with our community. That's a great thing to do. Yes, and we work together. We, I mean, we love working together with those other cultural institutions for sure, and we can do so much more when we do work together. Okay, so what's going to be coming up next year that's exciting for the sanctuary? Oh my gosh! Well. What I'm really thinking about after all this Halloween and Paddle to the Sea excitement is Film Festival. Yes. That'll be end of January and just actually got Bigger some... Bigger and better oh, every year. Yes. Amazing. I can't believe it. This is going to be the fifth year, if you can believe it. Wow. And as you know, we partner with an, a very famous San Francisco Ocean Film yep. Festival and I just got their package of films yesterday. And so I got to start watching, you know, what we're going to be seeing at the end of January. And that's a great opportunity for volunteers to to come and actually help screen these films and see where we're going to put them and, and really get the buzz going about these great films that you're not going to catch anywhere else. So that's coming up. That's sort of on my radar for film festival. But then next year, 
we have some some great projects coming up as well. We were awarded a grant. Uh, the sanctuary through the Friends again was awarded a grant through NOAA um, to partner again, like we're talking about yep. collaborations. <laughs> partner with uh, University of Delaware and Michigan uh, Tech University and get some of their tools that they use to survey the water to do some additional surveying of Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary. Oh, great. So that's, they're trying out some new equipment. They're um, also, and then, to that end, that we're also gonna be able to get the data from this remote sensing. So looking at ground that we may not have really seen before, and wow. I guess really seeing if there's more shipwrecks out there. And you'll be bringing lots of people to town too. Lots of people. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a big project. So big vessels coming in, lots of partners, lots of scientists coming in from elsewhere, and then partnering with, with local institutions too. So we're looking forward to that project for sure. I know a lot of banks and credit unions had out, send out their um, Christmas clubs November 1st, so start thinking about that sanctuary store too. That's right, that's right. In fact, we have got some great new merchandise in there. Of course, the Paddle to the Sea book. Mm -hmm. We just got a big shipment of those because we figured people will be you know, excited yes. from the presentation. All the kids going to the auditorium to see it will come home and say, I want to have that book. So we have lots of books and um, orders going in this week for, for Christmas. So in a couple weeks, come into the Sanctuary Store and there's going to be new and exciting gifts to buy for Christmas season. If you're looking for a wonderful way to be a volunteer in the new year, give you a call. You have lots of different opportunities. Absolutely. Lots to do at the Sanctuary. Thank you for being here. We're out of time. Thanks, Nancy. Please stay tuned for Dr. Don McMaster following these messages. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Dr. Don McMaster. I'm president of Alpena Community College, and I'm pleased to have as our guest this morning Jeff Blumenthal, director of learning technology at ACC. Welcome, Jeff. Thank you very much for having me. Director of learning technology, what does that uh, entail? Well, it, it has to do with uh, working with a lot of our faculty and staff on using some, some of the new learning technologies, helping online class and the course development that goes on there, uh, assisting and helping students and our faculty with uh, online course development as well. A very important piece of what, uh, what happens at ACC and also does cybersecurity fit into that? That's something we hear a lot about these days. Yeah, somehow I was uh, volunteered <laughs> into uh, helping out with cybersecurity. Uh, so I serve as the chair for the cybersecurity task force at the college. And it, it's something that we have a genuine interest in in a lot of other colleges as well as uh, business community and uh, other organizations are interested in trying to uh, ramp up the efforts to make sure that we are secure from various uh, uh, th threats that might come from outside of our walls. I think those of you folks who work in that field know enough to be more scared than about it, of the vulnerabilities than people who don't. Yeah, it is. Every, every day there's new threats that are introduced and there's new things that you hear about in the news and you hear about uh, uh, banking institutions that uh, sometimes have been um, uh, uh, intruded upon and, and information stolen and if anybody has had their identity stolen they certainly can understand that it's very real and, and it's something you have to take seriously. Yes, it sure is. So uh, along those lines, on November 1st, it sounds like there's a really neat opportunity uh, co-sponsored by ACC and the Chamber to uh, investigate this topic. Could you tell the folks a little bit about that? Sure. The month of October uh, is sponsored by the Department of Homeland Security as being Cybersecurity Awareness Month. So we've been trying to have various efforts and uh, informational items. Uh, we, it, as a matter of fact, today we had some students that were uh, taking care of a table to try to provide information to students and community members that walk through to let them know about some of the threats and how to deal with uh, some threats that they may encounter. So as part of the Cybersecurity Awareness Month, we have scheduled uh, a guest presenter who is an expert within the field to be present here and speak at Alpena Community College at the Granham Theater on November 1st. Uh, his name is Bob Vish. He is uh, an expert within cyber forensics. He's worked in that field. He works in cybersecurity with Checkpoint Software. He uh, is a, has been a presenter at various other uh, uh, conferences uh, throughout the world and throughout the United States. So we're very uh, pleased that he's able to come to Alpena and uh, provide information about some of the very real threats that are out there. 
and uh, there will be three different presentations. And as you indicated, it is sponsored, co-sponsored by the um, Alpena Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Jackie Krawczyk has been wonderful with uh, working to get the business community and chamber members involved in that effort. And so at 9 a.m. Uh, will be the first session that will be available for the college staff and for the community to come and attend. And again, that's at Granham Theater. And then at noon, uh, or actually 11.30, uh, there'll be a luncheon that's provided for uh, chamber members and for the business community. And then right after that at noon, uh, Mr. Vish will be speaking to the business and community members about cybersecurity. And then, of course, at 2 o'clock, uh, we'll have a presentation that will be provided specifically for the students, networking students, and area high school students. Uh, Mr. Vish has a real genuine interest in trying to expose our students to the types of fields that uh, deal in cyber forensics and things of that nature. That sounds very robust. So the the two o'clock session would be for ACC network administration students? Uh, yes, as well as uh, any high school students that uh, would like to come and attend. We certainly would like to invite them to come and learn about the field and about some of the different trends that are happening out there in cybersecurity. Are there jobs and careers in cybersecurity? It, it, is, a, it is an emerging field. Uh, obviously, as you can imagine, you need people that are able to go into the business and the business community and to be able to scan and look for various exp uh, areas of uh, uh, threats and exposures and, uh, of course, look for um, uh, items that might pose a risk to information being stolen uh, and, and do an audit. Uh, so, yes, yeah, cyber forensics and cybersecurity is, is a very, um, very rapidly growing field. So s forensics seems to kind of have a connotation of sleuthing or doing detective, detective work or tracking things. What sort of skills would uh, a, pers a young person need to kind of thrive in that field? Uh, well, of course, anybody that has a genuine interest in the, the computer field, networking, um, doing research, uh, and they have to understand, obviously, uh, the whole network infrastructure and how that is put together, um, understanding how to look at uh, programming code and perhaps even looking for vulnerabilities that might occur within the code. Um, oftentimes, if, if, a, if a website has been hacked or, or has been compromised, somebody has to be able to look within that code and say, okay, well, where did it happen? And so they have to have an understanding of uh, uh, web design um, and then how all of those pieces all fit together. And then the other important aspect is, is they have to be able to communicate with the public and with the business members to explain what's the action plan, what can I do to be able to solve this problem. So you have to be a really good communicator too, which is hard to find obviously with somebody that's, <laughs> that's a programmer in the computer science yeah, field. Yeah, the, the, the general maybe perception or misperception is that uh, folks would have maybe the first, that kind of intuition about the the uh, interior mysteries of computer architecture, but wouldn't have the basic people skills to Correct. kind of match up with it. Exactly. And yes. um, so the total package would have both pieces in it. Yes, very much so. Um, could you tell us a little bit more about Mr. B Mr. Vish? Well, he, you know, as far as his uh, uh, area of expertise, he has worked within uh, cyber forensics, as I had indicated. Uh, he works for Checkpoint Software right now, uh, but he also has uh, done several consulting with various companies and organizations uh, to take a look at their business, provide an audit of where the vulnerabilities are, and then, of course, uh, provide various solutions on how to solve those types of uh, uh, issues. Um, we, were, we were fortunate enough to get him actually to come and be a part of uh, what, we, what we're looking at for a guest presenter because uh, not soon after that he's leaving to go to Tel Aviv, uh, so he does travel worldwide because he is sought after for his uh, expertise. Wonderful. Well, that's exciting. That's exciting to get an international or nationally known expert on our campus. Uh, thanks to, thanks uh, for your efforts there and, and Jackie at the Chamber. Appreciate uh, all you, what you do in terms of cybersecurity. Uh, thank you for watching Talk of the Town. We'll see you again next week. This has been Talk of the Town with your hosts, Nancy Smitham and Don McMaster. For a list of events taking place in Northeast Michigan, please visit our website at wbkb11.com and click on the community link. This has been a Thunder Bay Broadcasting Corporation production. The Talk of the Town furniture and set design are provided by... Young Appliance Art Van Furniture on US 23 South in Alpena.